Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Kings Island and today I'm with Sydney. What are we going to do today? Today we are doing your zombie look. We're going to go over the basics of airbrush and how to do wounds. Let's get to it. So today we're going to be doing a zombie look on you, which is um, one of our most basic looks that we start with. It's usually a pretty easy one to kind of do on your own or here. Obviously airbrush is a little different. Um, but this is a good beginner look. So we're gonna base you in our corpse color. We base pretty much all of our looks. So I'm gonna have you push us. Um, I worked for six years at the park, five years here. I was in games originally and I had a bunch of friends who worked over in makeup and after a while, um, I was going for a uh, to art school eventually, so they kind of coaxed me over here. So, but next we're gonna be doing veining. Most of our zombie looks, we like to make sure you can have some detail. You don't want them to look fat and washed out. So with the airbrush, you can make uh, smaller lines by adjusting certain things. Uh, I paint Hansel from Hansel and Gretel on iTreat, and I really enjoy that one. Um, it's got a lot of like colors and some stuff that you can kind of get creative with and I think looks like that are fun. Next we're going to go in with contour. Um, so that'll be just kind of like hollowing out your cheekbones, hollowing out your eyes and things like that. Um, when you're doing like jawline things, you want to go slightly below the jaw so you don't cut off the cheek and it gives you kind of your hollowed out dead look. A lot of contour on like zombies and other undead creatures are kind of like exposing bone structure and kind of showing how you would look with your skin sunken in. We used to use cream makeup here a few years ago and we kind of made the transition over to airbrush around 2020 when we were trying to have a little bit more space and cleanliness. But at Home Kits, there's plenty of things. We have these little wolf palettes that are water activated. Um, they come in a lot of different colors and a lot of like face paint studios will use those. And um, there's also cream based makeups and things like that. I'm gonna go back over a couple of the contour lines. Doing that allows like a crackle so you look kind of like dried out. If you want a really dark look, you can always go in with browns and different um, warm tone colors like that and cool tones. But if you really want some depth and darkness, you can add a touch of black. Typically zombies are pretty easy, so are clowns. Clowns allow a lot of creativity and if you get like your white cream paint, you can kind of just draw whatever you want. So it adds a lot of personalization, but if you want something a little spookier, zombies are usually a very good starting space because the messier they are, it's okay. I'm gonna put a little bite mark on you. We do have prosthetics that we use for wounds, but for today's purposes, we'll just paint them on. When painting wounds, a lot of people just go in kind of with reds and things, but you want to really like darken it up. We have this great color called scab, um, and it kind of adds some depth and makes it look like kind of like little puncture wounds and things like that. Now, this is probably like our favorite thing to use for zombies. We have this, it's called a splatter tip. So it'll actually take the airbrush and kind of shoot it off into droplets. So that creates kind of like the blood drip effect and the splatter of wounds and things. We're getting pretty close to the end, so this is kind of the point where you would clean up anything that you want. Um, you can add any darkness, you can add more veining if you want. Sometimes if your veining gets lost or it isn't as dark, you can go over in other colors. Um, I used blue at first, like your typical veins, and then sometimes if you want them to look kind of like loaded or like they're going to burst, you can add a little bit of the scab on top. Typically thrifting is always great, especially if you're going for like a zombie or something tattered, something really cheap that you don't mind if you got like fake blood or if you ripped it up a little bit. So I always recommend thrifting, but really just making a lot of stuff is also really helpful. There's so many online tutorials that you can just use really nicely for that. But yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's crazy. Have you ever had any kind of makeup like this done? I have not. As you're doing different zombie looks and everything, our main colors are going to be like your corpse for the base, your ST50 or browns for the contour, and scabs and reds for blood. As you're making the different looks, um, just kind of test what works on different skin tones, colors, things like that, because not all of these colors are going to be super available, but you're always going to be able to find like thick blood, different things like that. Um, we typically start haunt stuff in April or May um, because a lot of people think it kind of happens overnight. Uh, some people don't even realize that we have makeup artists year round, um, but we work on the shows and things in the summer and when we're not doing shows, we will come back here, we will sculpt masks, we will sculpt wounds and different um, prosthetic pieces to use and then we'll run them all summer long to make everything you do for haunt. 